Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to help your threat hunting and security program. And today what we're going to do is we're going to continue our series on Process Hacker. And specifically, we're going to focus on how to analyze services and then a brief overview of how to analyze network data with Process Hacker. Last week, we covered the process side. So if you wanna see that, definitely check that video out. But today it's all about services and network data. So let's hop right in. So quick overview, what is Process Hacker? Again, it's a free, powerful, multi-purpose tool um, that helps you dynamically analyze what programs, what applications, what services are doing on your system. Um, it's available for free from, um, from SourceForge from the link there. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to dive deep into process details see things like service state information, active network connections, um, and a lot of advanced resource information, things like you know handles, what file handles, what registry handles is it using, what semaphores. It allows you to dig, dig deep into and see the behavior of an application as it's running. Um, again, it can be installed um, or used in portable binary format, so you don't need admin permissions if you're using this in an instant response case to where you might need to install it um, and there's restrictions on what you can install. The good news is there's a portable version, so you don't need to install anything to use it. Again, uh, permissions do matter. So as you're using Process Hacker, we had this last time, we're gonna have this again because it's super important. Permissions do matter. On the left, you can see we ran Process Hacker with admin. And if you look at that username column towards the end, you can see usernames on there that if you just run it as user, as seen on the right, you don't see that information. Username's not the only thing you won't see, it's just the most visible for this example. And that's to say that remember when you run Process Hacker, you do wanna run it as admin. You don't have to, but you're, you might be more limited in only seeing what a given user can see. So exploring services. So today we're going to talk about the services tab. Um, on the services tab, this shows all services on a given machine. Um, you can see things like the service name, the display name it actually shows up as, um, the service type. Um, so is it a process? Is it a driver? Um, you can see the status. Is it running? Is it stopped? Um, you can see the start type, if it's set to automatically run or if it's disabled. Um, and the process ID, if, if applicable. So again, you can quickly map a running service or a service that's installed um, to the process that relates to it. Right-clicking on a service allows you to pivot to the registry entry. So you can right-click and say, go to registry em em entry. Um, it'll take you to the portion of the registry associated with that process. Um, commonly the image path, because there actually is a MITRE attack where you swap out image paths you know, and a service will actually run another file in there. Um, it'll also, you can right click there and say, go to directory and it'll take you to where the DLL or executable's at, right? So if you're running down a malicious process or a malicious service, this is one quick way to quickly pivot over to the file that um, is ultimately responsible for that. If you double click though on a given service, what it'll do is bring up the properties tab. In our case, we use code meter again this week, just like last week. For those not familiar, code meter is a licensing tool that a lot of software applications use. On the given box we tested on, um, one of our forensic application requires that USB dongle to be plugged in. And code meter is actually the service, um, an application on the box that is responsible for validating um, you know, that you actually do have a license key. There are CVEs and older versions of code meter too, if you're on the pen testing side. So this is where it's also interesting to see, hey, if I'm looking for the CVE associated with code meter, we might look for that network port when we get to the network portion. But on the general tab, what we see again, we have that name, we have the type, we have the start type, we have the binary path. So again, we know where this service is pointing to start. Um, we can see, hey, did an attacker swap this out? Did an attacker install a service and point it to Windows Temp or point it to some other, you know, really weird directory in there? You can see the user account and password. And if it's applicable to it, you can see the service DLL there. So this is what you can see in the general tab. 
Hopping over to the security tab. So this shows what groups can perform actions on a given product, on a given um, service. So um, you can also modify the permissions here too, but you can see down there, we have five groups that are shown on this box. Um, and then when you go to that bottom part, you can see the permissions. So does it have full control? Can it just query status? Can it query the configuration? Can it modify? This is where you can get granular on what a given user group is able to do to a given service. Um, so again, if you're debugging down and trying to see why a service was manipulated, this is where you might start to say, okay, here are the groups that might have manipulated this service. Um, you know, in the event you don't have logging that points to it. Um, this is one good way to dig down into that. When we get into the other tab, so we have the services uh, security identifier, right? Enabled protection, required privileges. Um, you can also remove required privileges here. So the example we show here doesn't have required privileges mapped. If it did, you could remove them. You could also add them here. Um, the unique, the service SID, um, security ID, this both tells you um, about what um, created the service. So um, these security IDs are not random. So if you look at the prefix to it, that actually does correlate um, two given characteristics for the service. Um, a lot of times these actually are documented on the Microsoft page. We're not going to dive deep into ripping apart SIDs in this blog, but um, it can both be used to identify characteristics. It can also be used for correlation. Um, these service IDs are unique. So if you have another log source that's using the service ID to, or security ID to identify it, um, this might be the unique unique ID across other data sources to look for. So we talked a, bit, a lot about services. Now we're going to do a brief hit on network behavior. Um, so Process Hacker also, what's nice with it is you kind of get, if you're familiar with Netstat on Linux, you kind of get a Netstat type output. Um, Netstat is also on the Windows command prompt, but here what you get, right, is you get the, um, you know, the live real time updating um, information on network behavior going on. What you get on here, you get the process name again, you get both the local and remote address and port, you get the protocol, you get the state. So is it established? Is it connected? Is it listening? Um, you get that information there and then the actual um, owner. So the process that owns it. If you double click um, on a given network field, it'll actually take you to the process um, that owns that. So again, you can quickly go from a bound or an established port um, and see what application is ultimately responsible for this. Um, if you're debugging or if you're looking at potentially a potential suspicious service, this is where you would look at those listening ports, right? Did, a ma did malware stand up a port and wait for um, someone to connect to it, right? Um, or if it connected out and it has an active connection, you could come in here and say, okay, it's not listening, it's an actual established connection here. Um, and I can see both where it's going out to um, and the ports responsible for it to correlate it to other data. So again, this is a very powerful tool for exploring network behavior in real time as it's going on on your system. So again, this was a quick overview, both of using Process Hacker to look at service information and also look at network behavior um, related to a given process. I hope this was helpful. We hope to see you back next week. Thanks a lot for tuning in.